Hello, Corinth. I wanted to share with you a devotional thought today that came from an aggravating thing that happened this morning. Uh, it's really kind of silly. As I've told you before, uh, I can deal with the big things in life. It's those little bitty pesky things that have a tendency to get the best of me. I come by it honest, and I've told you this before, but I like to complain. Half the fun of doing something is getting to complain about it. And today, my complaint is running late. Whenever we hear the term running late, there are several things that might come into our minds. We all know that person who is chronically late. And adding insult to injury, uh, they laugh it off as if it's no big deal. Uh, I think running late is disrespectful. Uh, it shows a lack of consideration, a lack of concern, a lack of respect for the other person and his or her time. I've told you before that I grew up being taught that 10 minutes early is on time, on time is late, and 10 minutes late will get you fired. Uh, my father even taught me that you needed to allot enough time to have a flat tire, change it, and still get there on time. Whenever I buy a new vehicle, one of the first things that I do is find where the spare tire is, the jack, and then I actually time myself to see how long it takes me to change a tire on that particular vehicle. When we think about running late, one thing that we might think about is doctor's appointments. They always tell you to get there 15 minutes early. And I understand why. There's paperwork to fill out, so on and so forth. And I'm not even being critical of the medical industry because if you let someone not get there 15 minutes early, then it's taking them that time when they would have been in their appointment to fill out the paperwork and then the doctor's schedule is off for the rest of the day. But they tell you to get there 15 minutes early. So let's say my appointment is at 11. I get there at 1045 in order to fill out my paperwork and I am sitting there waiting and how many times do you think that I am actually in the exam room and meeting with the doctor at 11? Never happens. But the thing that became the inspiration for uh, this particular devotional thought uh, was this morning when I got in my vehicle. Uh, and you've probably had this experience happen to you as well. You get in your vehicle, you start it, the radio comes on, and one of your favorite songs is on the radio. It's one that you haven't heard in a long time. Maybe it's Crazy by Patsy Cline or A Country Boy Can Survive by Hank Williams Jr. Maybe it's a Juice Newton song from the 70s or Linda Ronstadt or Ann Murray. A song you haven't heard in ages and you are so excited that it's on the radio. You can't wait to listen to the song. And three seconds later, you realize that that's the very tail end of the song. You had been so excited about being able to hear it, only to have your hopes dashed because you got in your vehicle two minutes too late to hear the song. Well, as I read my Bible, something strikes me about the Lord, and that is He's never early, He's rarely late, but even then, he's right on time. I'm thinking about an example from John chapter 11. It's the death and resurrection of Lazarus. And you're probably familiar with the story. The Lord receives word that Lazarus has died. But the word of God tells us that when Jesus found out about this, he delayed going to Bethany. He stayed where he was even once he heard that Lazarus was sick. In verse 5, the Word of God says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When therefore he heard that he was sick, he stayed then two days longer in the place that he was. 
Jesus finally goes to Bethany. And when He gets there, Martha says, Lord, if You had been here, our brother would not have died. Jesus in verse 23 says to Martha, Your brother shall rise again. The story goes on. Jesus tells Martha and Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. And then He asks them to show Him the place where Lazarus has been laid. In verse 39, Jesus instructs the people to remove the stone. They, they protested because after four days there would have been quite a stench to emanate from the tomb. This is the story where one of the most famous Bible verses, because it's the shortest verse in the Bible, is found. Jesus wept. I think it's tragic that this verse's claim to fame is that it is the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus knew what He was going to do. Jesus knew He had the power of death and life. Jesus knew that He was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Many theologians have speculated on why Jesus wept here. Some people have claimed that Jesus wept because He knew that He was going to bring Lazarus back to life and that Lazarus would have uh, more pain and suffering in life and that He would die again. Uh, I reject that idea. Our Lord is a Lord of grace. Our Lord is a Lord of mercy. If we want to make Him raising Lazarus from the dead what some claim it to be, then this is not an act of grace and mercy and love. I think Jesus wept because we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. I think we see here the human side of Jesus coming out. Who doesn't weep when a loved one has passed away? Who doesn't rejoice when friends rejoice? Who doesn't weep when friends weep? I think there is a lot of humanity in those two verses. And those two words tell us an awful lot about our Lord and Savior. Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth! And Lazarus comes out of the tomb. Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Our Lord is never early, seldom late, and even then, He's right on time. So stay faithful in prayer. Our Lord's delay is not an example of His denial. Have a great day.